థ్యాంక్స్ ఫర్ జాయినింగ్ టుడేస్ సిఎఫ్ఓ కాంక్లేవ్ ఈరోజు చాలా హ్యాపీ మన హైదరాబాద్ నుంచి సిఎఫ్ఓస్ సీనియర్ ఫైనాన్స్ కోలీగ్స్ కంట్రోలర్స్ నూట యాభై మంది కన్నా ఎక్కువ మంది వచ్చారు ఈరోజు ఫుల్ ప్యాక్డ్ అజెండా ఉంది ద థీమ్ ఆల్సో ఈజ్ లైక్ ఏ త్రిబులర్ రెజిలియన్స్ రీఇన్వెన్షన్ రీఇమాజినేషన్ అండ్ వీ హ్యావ్ టోటలీ ఫైవ్ సెషన్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో దర్ ఇమినెంట్ స్పీకర్స్ ఆర్ ఆల్సో ఆర్ దేర్ ద ఫస్ట్ సెషన్ ఈజ్ లైక్ ఏ బోర్డ్ హౌ ద బోర్డ్ రెజిలియన్స్ లైక్ ఏ హౌ కంపెనీ హ్యాస్ టు మెయింటైన్ ద గవర్నెన్స్ కంప్లయన్స్ హౌ దే కెన్ టేక్ బోర్డ్ ఎక్స్పర్టైజ్ ఇన్ ఆర్డర్ టు డ్రైవ్ ద కంపెనీ పర్ఫార్మెన్స్ so we have two uh, eminent speakers for this session the second is like a most of us know indigo airlines indigo airlines is like a amazing story is a being from financials or market share or from their cash flow positions then how they are like a various productivity improvement areas in order to drive the performance we are very eager to understand how they are like a consistently having the sustainability and growth so that is the second session and the third session is like a in today's era without artificial intelligence nothing can move and from now to if you see next 5 to 10 years i think ai will play major role be it in the finance processes or core process of any company so that's where we want to give insights of this uh, artificial intelligence to the, all the participants so that is the third session the fourth session is like a completely different is on the well being one is focusing on company's growth putting the best efforts how you can drive the performance at the same time we have to balance our personal life otherwise is like a health is like a wealth if the health is not there whatever you not able to uh, drive uh, you will not have energy that's why we have called one expert in this area so that is the session the final today like if you see the stock markets like index is going like a very beautifully and then um, now how companies can plan their ipos at what point of time how they can get a good market valuation so that's why this ipo journey so that's where is the fifth session so we have full day agenda packed agenda and from all these sessions i am very sure uh, strongly believe participants will get greater insights thank you thanks thanks for joining for today's తెలంగాణ చాప్టర్ చైర్మన్ సాయి ప్రసాద్ గారు రెస్పెక్టెడ్ రాజేష్ జీ శ్రీ నరసింహన్ మిస్టర్ రెడ్డి మిస్టర్ సమ్యుద్దీన్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ సిఐఐ డిస్టింగ్విష్డ్ సిఎఫ్ఓస్ మెంబర్స్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫైనాన్షియల్ కమ్యూనిటీ ఇన్వైటీస్ గెస్ట్ ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు కన్వే రిగ్రెట్స్ ఆన్ బిహాఫ్ ఆఫ్ ఆనరబుల్ డిప్యూటీ చీఫ్ మినిస్టర్ అండ్ ఫైనాన్స్ మినిస్టర్ యాజ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ యూ నో he was expected to address this inaugural session but as chairman pointed out he had to leave uh, urgently for delhi he very much wanted to be a part of this event show his uh, support and solidarity to cii telangana but hopefully there will be some other occasion in the future but nevertheless i am very happy to stand in on his behalf because uh, in my line of work also i meet cfos regularly i interact with them most of my interactions with them are very positive but i should admit that some of them are also very frustrating uh, i mean i thought it would be a good opportunity to convey my ideas my thoughts also in this gathering the way in which i interact the context under which i interact with the cfos is see all of us know as uh, rajesh you also pointed out our country is making rapid economic progress and much of that progress is coming from the private sector there are private companies today which are expanding which are growing which are creating green field products which are doing uh, new lines of activity and at some point in time they have to make a choice where to take this activity up from should they do it in telangana should they do it in tamil nadu should they do it in gujarat these kind of choices are very important and cfos play a very important role in providing inputs which uh, the board or the top management takes into account before making that decision and it is in this context that i get a chance to interact with lots of C- cfos because typically when they have to take a decision they also like to evaluate what the state is providing to them all of us would know that as part of industrial policies states offer many things including package of incentive to evaluate whether this package is good or that package is better what is more attractive what is more suitable and so on and so forth and as i said on many occasions i have the 
responsibility of sitting with the CFO, explaining to him, him or her, what what we are uh, offering, how does it compare with something which someone else is offering, and so on and so forth. So, uh, <clears throat> I mean, of course, this is not a business negotiation. So, I don't want to get into the details of what incentives we provide and how it is considered to be some of one of the best in the country. But the general point which I would like to tell everyone is that see, financial uh, advantages are definitely important. It is not to say that incentives mean nothing. We can ignore incentives. And incentives, obviously, are provided by the government only for one reason, which is to make your uh, project viable right from day one or bring make it viable as early as possible. Normally, when you start a new greenfield project, it takes a while for your employees to learn the manufacturing process. It uh, takes a while for the supply chain to settle, logistics to kind of uh, get uh, aligned with what you require, and so on and so forth. And obviously, the productivity, the challenges that are faced in the initial days lead to little erosion of the stream of revenues that you would have anticipated. And therefore, the incentives that the government provides, that takes care. It provides a cushion, so to say, to take care of some of the shortfalls that you would have anticipated in your balance sheet. That is the only reason. And of course, India is a federal country. There is competition amongst the states. All these get uh, funded. So investments are important. And uh, in that context, uh, incentives do matter. But what I, many times I succeed, but sometimes I also, as I said, I find it very frustrating. When I try to explain to members of the CFO or his team, how do you evaluate the totality of the picture? Incentives are one part, but what else is there which the state is offering? For example, just to give some real context about Telangana, as you know, in Telangana, uh, and since uh, Narsimamgar is the head of the EODB committee of CII, we have perfected EODB, ease of doing business. As many of you would know, India is considered, considered to be a very difficult country to do business because it ranks very low or poorly on EODB. There are hundreds of approvals, permissions, and you are made to run around. There is no clarity. There is no certainty. And at some point, uh, people also exploit your uh, helplessness. So it's all very messy and very complicated. And decades altogether, this was the impression about India outside that if you go to India, you will have to face this kind of harassment, this kind of torture compulsory. Some part of it is still true, but lots of things have changed also. Particularly in the last 10 years, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister, as you know, has started this flagship campaign called Make in India. And he's very realistic. He knows that nothing will be made in India if we don't reform all these uh, basic uh, fundamental kind of uh, processes. And again, I'm happy to share with you that Telangana is one state which has carried out the maximum reform. In fact, we are one state which brought in a regulation that to start the construction of your factory, you don't even require any approval or permission. Let us say you take land either from the government or you acquire a land privately and you have to construct your factory. Obviously, the factory will take six months, nine months, one year, depending upon the scale for uh, construction. But in Telangana, we have done away with the requirement of taking prior approval. You take the land today morning and in the same evening, you can start the construction without any paper, any approval, any permission at all. So uh, some of these kind of reforms are those which will help you. I mean, in, even in a very well-administered state, the minimum time it takes to get all these papers, etc., sorted out is usually two months, three months, sometimes even more. In Telangana, we have made it zero. If you are really a very expert CFO, you will factor all these things. What would have taken three months somewhere else is taking zero for me in Telangana. How much of savings will I accrue that way? More than anything else, what kind of mental peace will I get? I am not made to run around anywhere. How much value will you give to it? If I tell you that no one will harass you in Telangana, what is the value of that? How many crores is it worth? So these are some of the points which I try to explain. That certain things cannot be valued in financial terms in a very balance sheet kind of way. Certain things are beyond money. If I tell you, in Telangana, as you know, Hyderabad is roughly in the center of the state and it has now, after bifurcation, become a, sh a smaller and a manageable state. Distances are not very far. More than anything else, we have this outer ring road, which also helps you exit the city in whichever direction you want to 
and then there are good roads thereafter also so even if your industry is far it is not more than about an hour's commute and uh, imagine the scenario that all your employees your top managers they can live in a city like hyderabad and through a short commute they can go to work and then they can come back they can enjoy all the social infrastructure of the city like good schools good hospital good weather and so on what value will you give it suppose i tell you that instead of uh, living in hyderabad in some other state you will be living let us say 500 kilometers or 400 kilometers away from a big city will it not make a difference in the quality of life that your employees will encounter the quality of life their family members will encounter what value will you give it to so not the point i am trying to make is that not everything can be valued in a pure financial term there are certain things which are economic value which are social value how do you capture that and how do you make a strong case that these states matter much more to us than somewhere else see if if you just see how incentives are uh, today kind of pitched many people call it a race to the bottom i mean if i am giving 100 rupees someone else will give 150 the third will give 200 the fourth will give 250 in fact there are some states i don't want to name any one or i i don't want to run down any state there is one state which is even willing to pay the salary of your workers for 5 years apart from the incentives but the real scenario of that state is that you can't even survive there for one day so but you go there just for that temptation that salaries will be paid for 5 years i don't even have to write a check for the salaries the government will pay that is that more tempting or the concern that nothing will happen in that state any time people can uh, attack your factory and burn down everything is that a consideration so let us avoid this race to the bottom let us look at things in a more holistic way which really mean business which can be your partners which can support your uh, kind of uh, long term growth uh, prospects uh, there and i'm not saying that telangana is the only state in the country there are many i mean i mean if you really ask me i've been working in this sector for more than 10 years now so i i have a fairly good assessment of what is happening in our country and i'll be candid to admit that of the 28 states in our country i would rate about 6 to 8 states which are very progressive they have good policies they mean business the red carpet for investors is always rolled out the impression that india is a difficult country to do business they have changed their internal policies things are much much better there they also have stability policy continuity etc etc so if you have to real uh, if you have to really do business look at how the these kind of progressive states operate and then whatever choice you have to make whatever is aligned with your own philosophy and growth plans you are welcome to do anything so these are certain things which i thought this will be a very good forum for me to present to go beyond uh, just numbers and look at the essence of how business has to be done how a state operates i'm very happy that uh, in today's conclave interesting sessions have been organized as nasimam garu pointed out and i'm very intrigued by the fact that you have chosen to spend uh, time on discussing how ai will be relevant for uh, the financial sector uh, domain so to say this is a very important theme and uh, this is a theme which we also want to promote i am also the it secretary in the state and this is again a theme which we want to really promote in the in the state and in the city of hyderabad our ambition is to ensure that hyderabad becomes the ai hub not just for this country but is considered an important hub across the world and uh, we also want to popularize ai application across different fields so if there is some real use cases which cii companies are using in their finance work we'll be very happy to learn about it and maybe uh, kind of support it further which you are planning to discuss is about uh, health and well being etc which again is something which is uh, very critical and uh, very happy that in a conference like this thing themes like uh, health well being etc are mainstreamed and you are getting eminent speakers to discuss these topics